This big bulky guy here. Yes, that's right. Time for an unboxing. It's still in the factory shrink wrap. So this is a TAC drive, and I bought this one specifically because one, it was cheap. It, and it's been a few years, but it was cheap. And it also comes with the IDE adapter. Now, I don't know what interface it is, because what would be cool is if that could be plugged directly into the sound card, but I don't have that right now. However, at least I have this. Now, the cool thing about this drive is it's brand spanking new in the box. Still in the shrink wrap. Alrighty then. I don't know when it was made. I'm thinking about popping the drive apart and checking the capacitors to make sure they're not leaking. Because even though this drive has never been used as new, it's also old. So, but look at some of the propaganda. Absolutely the fastest. Super quad, 600 kilobytes per second data transfer rate and 195 millisecond access time delivers the smoothest video motion, the sharpest images, and the fastest data retrieval available for the PCAT. And not on a 386. Not going to happen. Sound Blaster plug and play compatible. All the necessary drivers included to connect your Super Quad 4X directly to Sound Blaster or Sound Blaster compatible boards. So, yes, it will connect to a sound card with if you, for going this. Let's see, meets and exceeds your MPC standards. Your quad. 4X Drive will play all CD-ROM titles, plus it's CD-ROM XA ready. Don't care. Super Quad and Package includes the CD-ROM Drive. I would certainly hope so. Super Quad 4X Installation Software. The TAC AT Interface Board. Interface and audio cables, mounting hardware, and installation manuals. That really felt like an LGR moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we the serial number we need to unbox it now. So I want to get this out of the way so we can get this prepared for unboxing. Time for the unboxing of this super quad speed 4x drive. AT CD-ROM drive. Does that mean I can't use it in an XT machine? Why not? I don't know. Maybe we should find out one day. Mm, nah. I might spin this off into a separate video because it's just kind of, it's cool. I mean, how often do you unbox modern vintage hardware? Not very often. Unless you're LGR or one of those guys. But not, not me typically, so... Yeah, it's a TAC drive, which is not very common that I see. Well, we have a little compromise in the packaging down here. Oh, that's what we can use to open it. Oh, I almost don't want to open it. But, you know what? I gotta. I gotta open it. It's a cool little device, because why not? And as we said earlier, in the ALR video, absolutely the fastest. We'll see. Alright, so time to open the box. Oh, that sound. Asthma. A lot of people get a kick out of this. I don't know why, but I figured why not. Opening it up. And it's the first time this thing has been opened since whenever the hell this drive was made, which I don't know when it was made. I wonder if it says here. No, not really. Should I keep the box, though? I don't know. Maybe. 
It's kind of cool. It's coming open. Ever so slightly. Trying to manipulate this with one hand while I'm holding the phone is kind of interesting. Alright, yeah, the plastic is definitely yellowed. That's done. That is definitely done. Garbage. Garbage. Alrighty then. The box. Let's see, how do I get it apart now? Slide it off. I think. Okay, it pushes out. That's so cool. Just comes out like a sleeve. And when you take the cover off, you're you you're left with this big white cardboard box. And that's it. So all the marketing mumbo jumbo gone. Let's see how do we open this? Let's open from the side. Now it looks like it opens from the top. So let's flip it around. First time it's being opened since it's packing. And you can kind of see the yellow lines in it. This camera's doing automatic white balance, so it's kind of hard to tell. Ooh, foam. Look, the foams attack the cardboard. Wow, this is cool. CDAT accessories. Foam. Oh, yeah. That foam is rotted. It is not. Yeah. Model number. Here's our warranty card that's turned yellow. It looks like 1800s paper. Because I pretty much guarantee you this was white when it was new. TI Computer Products Limited Warranty. This product was warrantied by TI America against defects in materials and workmanship. Length of warranty, one year. Uh, it might be a little bit expired. What if I do date of purchase? September of 2021. So I think is when I got this. I don't remember. It's been a while. Oh, there's the drive in all of its glory. Let's see if there's a date. May 1995. That would be about right. Because the 386 Dad bought in the winter of 96, I think. No, spring of 96. Early spring, late winter, early spring of 96. No, never mind. 97. Shit. Time flies. So, let's take a look at this cardboard box that I took out the top. Is that just an insert? No, there's stuff in there. There is. There is stuff in there. The card is in there. And the manuals look like they're in there. So, before we get the drive out, let's take that box out. All right. So the first thing we see right away is we have the card. That is just a typical Taiwanese special IDE card, which is, we're gonna need that. That'll be installed. And see, this one's only got the that's not what the box says it has. It says it has RCA jacks. No, this has a three and a half millimeter phone. So I probably won't plug the audio into this. There's some jumpers here too. So we got to set what the jumpers are supposed to be, but I bet it's in the manual. So we'll set that aside. Let's see what's in the rest of this box. Ah, oh, yes, the manuals.
Hardware manual, model CD55A. It's cool. What's in this? Software license agreement. Copyright 1994. Version 2.1. So there's that. Controls and functions, drive ID setting, factory preset. So, I wonder, hooking up the interface card, which is pretty self explanatory how all of this works. Front panel, precautions, dust door. So, that's what they call that. Emergency hole. Let's yeah, that'd be interesting. I've had to use it a time or two. Audio output connector. What's a strap switch? For daisy chain purposes only. Selects the drive ID number. Wow. So it's a proprietary form of IDE. So this really isn't IDE at all. Because IDE you only have master and slave. So don't be plugging this in an IDE controller. No, Siri Bob, that would be bad. Oh, there we go. That's an oddly familiar setup. Computers reminiscent of the time. Plug in the interface card. I'm trying to get to the next page. Interface cable, CD-ROM, all that fun stuff. Connection to sound equipment. Operating method, disc handling. Disc ejection. You know, typical stuff. You probably don't see it anymore. So, okay, so. Jumper setting. Factory preset jumper zero default. So you can have four drives on one chain. That's interesting. But it doesn't give you the jumper settings for the card. Gives you the jumper settings for the drive, but not the card. And there's all the specifications. So, okay, so that makes sense. It's just an installation manual, but it doesn't really tell you anything. All right, so we can save that on the side. But the problem is the card has these jumpers here, but it does not say, oh, there's still tape on here. I wonder if the tape is held up after 28 years of, it has 28 years old. What is it, 28 years? It's now 2022. I don't know. I can't math right now. Nineteen ninety five date code May the fifth, nineteen ninety five. Number six hundred and seventy four produced in that day. That's a lot. So yeah, we have jumpers here. Probably the IO. QC passed. Alright, let's take a look at the caps. Are they leaking? Doesn't look like it. That one's fine. That one's fine. Nothing coming out of its bunghole. And that one's fine. Okay, so we're all good there. All good. 16-bit interface. So we're going to set that off to the side. And let's take a look at the software. 
Important, please read carefully the license agreement before opening the media envelope. The right to use this TX software product is sold only on the condition that the customer agrees to the following license. If you do not agree to the terms of the license, you may return the unopened package for a full refund. You know what? I don't agree. Where do I go and return this? You know what? Screw it. I guess I'll have to agree, right? So, okay, I'm going to have to put the phone down again. That glue did not want to give up easily. Let's see, what is in this package? Okay, we got another manual. Software manual. Now we have, what else is in here? The diskette. Is this disc any good anymore? I don't know. But there it is. CD-ROM installation disc version 2.1. I wonder if it's been archived. If not, well, I guess I better do that before I try to go use the disc. Because I'm going to need the driver. I guarantee that. So we'll, we'll back that up later. But for now, software manual CD55A. Here we go. Maybe this tells me. Please select I.O. port address. The default address is 2C0. Once you change the address, make sure, or no, be sure to make a note of JP1 new settings. Okay, so now we get into that. If you are a first time installer, both autoexec bat and config sys files will be modified to add the followings. Okay, XMS size, cache, this looks like it's using read, read back hash. Uh, the sys file, if upgrading from 8-bit to 16-bit card, the only change will be made to reflect the new card address. Last drive. The current setting will be F, J. Be sure your system bus is set to default at 8.33. Well, hell if I know. DOS version, under DOS, Windows version, under Windows, system requirements, oh, 486, dang, I don't make the cut, oh well, probably because of the multimedia functions, it's good, you gotta remember, it's advertised for that blazing fast speed, right, 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 installing under DOS. Choose a CD-ROM software installation sound blaster TA. Okay, so you can install two different, or three different ways. So since I'm going to be using the original card, we're just going to do option two. So for your I/O port address, Let's see. Okay, loading the DOS version. Oh wow, you can play CDs under DOS. Interesting. We might have to do that. Operation with the mouse, operation with the keyboard. Select playing a track. So, see, CD-ROM version, TX software installation under Windows. So, install to TX. Okay, it's basically the same thing. Whoa. Refer to Appendix A. Okay. Looks like I gotta have my appendix removed. There's the TC. There's the software. Changing the driver settings. At least it gives you all the parameters. Corel CDX. Corel. They made CD ROM drivers? Huh. Same company made Corel Draw. Okay, Appendix A, interface card. So, that's a whole lot of switches when I only got three. Okay, one, two, and three. So, that's these. One, two, and three. Okay. All right. So that's basically it for the manual and software. So, time to unbox the box. Alrighty then. CDAT accessory. 
What is in you? Let's move you off to the side for now. We're gonna open you up. It's an accessory. It's probably got all the cables in it. If I already have it, I guess. Yep. There's the screws. There is the cable. And the audio cable. Both cables and the screws. That's it. A big box. A whole box for just this. All right. Okay. Now I can save this off to the side. Am I going to save the box? I don't know. Probably not. Although, it's still cool as hell. Alright. That's off to the side. We'll set you out of the way down there. Oh, it collapsed. Rip. And we're going to save the best for last. The CD-ROM drive itself. Pull this out of this rotten foam. So we're going to pull this foam out because it's starting to crumble. Yeah, it's starting to... We'll put you off to the side in there. We'll grab the other piece here. I just like how these foams were designed specifically to hold these drives. It prevents it from getting damaged in shipping. If only everything was shipped that way in the vintage world. But no, it's not. So, alright. We have the package. It's a TXCD55A made May of 1995. There's the model number and a serial number. Class B digital apparatus. Nothing on the bottom side to note. And there's the front. Such a weird design. It's cool. It's like this slimline thing, but it's weird. So let's get it out of the package. Somehow. And there we have it. The unboxing of the TAC drive. So, that's it. That's it. That's it for this video. At least this video segment. So, quick little interlude. Um, the testing and installation of this will be in the other video, of course. But I just wanted to do a tangent unboxing. So, anyways. Thank you for watching on this one.